another video review, and today we're going to be doing Batman Under the Hood. Now, Batman Under the Hood is a story that tells about the return of Jason Todd to the Batman universe and to comics. Now, some of you out there don't know who Jason Todd is, so I'll give you a little history lesson. Back in the 1980s, Dick Grayson, the original Robin, was having huge success in the new Teen Titans comics, which at the time were arguably the most successful and popular comics for DC. But because he was so committed to the new Teen Titans comics, it left Batman without a Robin, without a sidekick, no dynamic duo. So DC decided to rectify this, while having Dick Grayson stay on the Titans and giving Batman a new Robin. They have Dick Grayson become Nightwing, and Jason Todd become Robin. Now, originally Jason Todd's backstory was similar to Dick Grayson's. You know, he was part of the circus, an acrobat, so on and so forth. However, after the crisis on Infinite Earth, his backstory was changed completely. To him being a street punk, living homelessly, and stealing Batman's wheels off the Batmobile. Batman, being impressed, decided to take him in and teach him a new way in life, to better himself, to actually be part of the solution rather than be part of the problem. Now, for whatever reason, Jason Todd was not popular with fans. He just didn't connect with them. There's a million reasons people will give why they don't like Jason Todd. I'm not going to get into those reasons at all. However, I am going to talk about what Dennis O'Neill said on why Jason Todd didn't succeed at the time. The key word is at the time. And it really comes down to two things. One is that Jason Todd was completely different from Dick Grayson. Not necessarily in a negative way, but just completely different. He, he was unrelatable as Robin as a character. The second reason is Dick Grayson really had no part in Jason Todd becoming Robin. In the pre-crisis, he handed him the suit and said it was okay he could become Robin. But after the crisis on Infinite Earth, Dick Grayson was totally erased from the equation. It was Bruce Wayne that made Jason Todd Robin. If you kind of look at Tim Drake becoming Robin and compare it to Jason Todd being Robin, you really get to see where one succeeds and one fails. Because Tim Drake was an incredibly successful character as Robin, arguably as good as Dick Grayson. And if you see where Jason Todd failed, Tim Drake succeeded. See, Tim Drake was very similar to Dick Grayson. However, he was different enough that he stood out and he was his own person. In addition to that, Dick Grayson played an essential part to him being Robin. He basically gave his seal of approval, his blessing, whereas with Jason Todd, people felt as though Dick Grayson was stabbed in the back, kicked in the nuts, and never really gave his seal of approval. Also, with Dick Grayson and Tim Drake, Dick was always a part of Tim's life, helping him out in the Robin comics. Jason Todd didn't have that. But it really doesn't matter why Jason Todd was not successful, because DC decided to kill him off. And they did so by having a phone-in vote. Fans could vote whether or not Jason Todd would live or die. And although it was a close vote, people wanted to see him dead. So in the Death in the Family story arc, Joker beats Jason Todd with a crowbar to an inch of his life and then blows him up. And he dies. Well, I hope so. It would be really miraculous if he survived an explosion like that. But anyway, this is important for two reasons. One is that it sets the tone for Batman as a character and as a comic for a good amount of time. You know, being darker, very much against working with people because he doesn't want to see what happened to Jason Todd happen to other people. It also opens the door to the highly successful Tim Drake Robin character. So it did a lot of good for Batman. And Jason Todd was dead for a long time. However, DC kind of teased the fact that he was still alive in the Hush storyline. And they decided with the Infinite Crisis coming up that in the Under the Hood storyline, Jason Todd would make his full return. So that's a basic history lesson on Jason Todd for those of you out there that don't know anything about him. Let's get into the story itself. Under the Hood takes place during the time when Gotham is ensued with crime. All of its gangs are under the control of a villain known as Black Mask, who's making life miserable for the Dark Knight and Gotham PD. While the war is going on between crime and order, a new individual comes onto the scene, and that would be Red Hood. The second Red Hood. The original was the Joker, and you'll see why that's important. But this Red Hood is doing exactly what Batman does, vigilante work. 
However, the difference is, is he's like the dark version of Batman. He is killing people. He is destroying people. He is just controlling Gotham's gangs himself. Controlling crime is part of the solution, rather than the problem. At least, that's what Red Hood thinks. And lo and behold, Red Hood actually turned out to be Jason Todd. Now this is baffling Batman. How can Jason Todd be brought back to life? And while he's trying to figure this out, he has to deal with Black Mask, Jason Todd, and the Joker thrown into the mix. A hugely volatile combination of individuals. So the question is this. Who will win? Who will lose? Will the family be brought back together, or will it fall even more apart? And actually, in the end, maybe everyone loses, and no one wins. Let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Well, see, with Judd Winnick, I fall into a unique category, the same category I do with Jeff Lowe, in that Judd Winnick is either loved or hated by fans. He's done a lot of good and a lot of bad. But see, I've only read the good stuff that Judd Winnick has done. The same could be said with Jeff Loeb. I've only read his good stuff, like Batman, Superman, and the Batman Superman material. I haven't read any of his bad stuff, which I think is X-Men and the Hulk and so on and so forth. The same could be said with Judd Winnick. I've really only read his Outsiders and his Batman material, which is either good or really good. I haven't read any of his bad stuff, like Green Arrow. Some people said Green Arrow wasn't good with him. It doesn't really much matter. The fact is, is that I fall in a unique category with Judd Winnick. In that, I haven't experienced any of his bad. But even if I did experience his bad, I feel as though Judd Winnick did a very good job with what he was handed. Dealing with the return of Jason Todd is a messy situation for any writer, whether it's Judd Winnick, Jeff Loeb, Grant Morrison, Dennis O'Neill, Chuck Dixon, Jeff, uh, Jeff Johns, it could be Jesus himself. Dealing with the return of Jason Todd is not an easy task to write, and there's going to be criticism for it. And I think... Judd Winnick did a very good job at doing so. It's false, but the story is actually pretty sound. There's a lot of emotion, some good dialogue on all characters. Every character kind of feels true to form with what they should feel like in this book. There's happy moments, sad moments, and just absolutely awesome moments. The art in this is also very good. The only art I don't like is when Bruce takes off his cowl and you see him without his mask. It looks a little weird. But besides that, the art is very good. And the fight scenes are really fun. To see Jason Todd go against Bruce Wayne, both of them fighting similarly, using gadgets, it's really quite cool. And the story itself as a plot is really nice. You know, every character has a place. Even Dick Grayson showing up has a place. Because he was, although not essential to Jason Todd, he's essential to the role of Robin. Bad. Although there's good to this, they could be arguably equally as bad. One bad is the return of Jason Todd, why he came back, and how. If you don't want any spoilers to how he came back to life, you might want to skip ahead a few seconds, maybe a minute or so. But it's really more or less Superboy Prime punching the continuity wall and somehow revitalizing Jason Todd after he died. This is a horrible explanation to Jason Todd coming back to life. I prefer the movie version, Under the Red Hood, which is that Jason Todd was brought to life via the Lazarus Pit in Ra's al Ghul. Now, Ra's al Ghul did play a part in the comic, but he wasn't the main reason. The Superboy Prime reason? That's stupid. Really, I mean, I'm going to kill you to death, boy, if he has really said that. Brought back Jason Todd, it just didn't work out that well. The second problem with this is just it's way too long. Judd Winnick could have easily told the story he did in a shorter amount of time with less issues. It just drags on after a while. There's some stuff in there that really doesn't need to be in there. And lastly, there's really no resolve for the characters or the story. It kind of just ends. Jason Todd's story isn't even resolved yet. After Under the Red Hood, he disappears for a bit, shows back up in Robin Comics and Countdown and Nightwing, but his character story isn't resolved there either. He shows back up in Battle for the Cow, and it seems like his story is at least resolved for a time there. But then Grant Morrison gone and ruined all by doing something stupid like putting him in Batman and Robin. And again, revitalizing the character, but not really giving him any resolve. So Jason Todd hasn't had any resolve at all, period. 
I don't know if it's DC not knowing what to do with them, or just afraid to do something and piss off fans. Whatever the case, there's really no resolve for the characters or the story here. So whether or not you should get it. Well, this is going to be interesting when it comes down to recommendations, because it's not really whether or not this is a good book or a bad book, it's whether or not you like Jason Todd or you don't. On a whole, this is a good book. I think it's really well told, and even though it has its faults here and there, Judd Winnick did a good job at handling, on a whole, a tricky story. However, the thing is, a lot of people hate Jason Todd a lot, and will hate this book because of it. A lot of people love Jason Todd a lot, and will love this book because of it. My own personal philosophy when it comes down to comics and any form of literature is there's no such thing as a good character or a bad character. There's only potential. Jason Todd had as much potential to be a good character, he just wasn't written well. There are good stories, good ideas, and good characters that just have to be written well. It's really more or less the part of the writer. So, like I said, any idea in any character in any story has the potential of being good, it's really up to who's writing them. So Jason Todd is not necessarily bad as a character, he's just not written well. And I think a lot of people have such a bad taste in their mouth of Jason Todd when he was Robin that they still hold that grudge against him as a character. As a character now, I think he's pretty much succeeding. I like the dark Robin, dark Batman, vigilante aspect he has. The real big problem with him as a character is he does not really have any direction. DC doesn't know what to do with him. But going back to recommendation, like I said, it really comes down to this. Whether or not you like Jason Todd or you don't. If you're impartial on Jason Todd, I recommend picking this up because it's an important book in the Batman reading. If you like Jason Todd, I recommend picking this up because you'll enjoy it for what it is. If you don't like Jason Todd, you're probably not going to enjoy this. For whatever reason, it's not for you. So, use your discretion. People that are new to Jason Todd, give it a chance, you might like it. However, I recommend reading Batman Death in the Family before going into this because it really kind of sets the stage to everything that is done. So with that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.